Tim on the road joke. Okay. How do you make there be less pollutants coming out of out of all these cattle? You mean like their parts? Yeah. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> you put on a, a catalytic converter. Oh. Cattle. Oh, cattle. Oh. Yeah. Carry on. Carry on. Hey everybody. Welcome back to No Tears Frontiers Diaries. In this episode, we are going all the way from Southern Utah to where we are now in Yellowstone. We, well, we're just outside of Yellowstone. Yeah, out of West Yellowstone. We kind of made another little uh, happy mistake, a little Bob Ross <laughs> blunder, <laughs> if you will. Uh, we got our days mixed up. Being, you know, unemployed and with kind of an open schedule, not ever really knowing the day of the week, let alone the numeric value of what day of the month it could be right <laughs> we got here a day early instead of uh being on the ninth we got here on the eighth but it was it was nice because now look at it's where, great yeah. yeah we're in a beautiful camp spot and the journey here was really incredible as well so we started in saint george which is in southern utah and it's a very dry area um it's near zion national park and you've got those red rocks and yeah. cliffs and we were staying with our dear friends Dana and Bill and we took a little hike through the an area called Red Cliffs a yeah. very appropriate name was beautiful. That whole area all around Zion, it is just gorgeous. But it's also really cool to see the contrast between that type of landscape and then the day's journey, which was straight north yeah. all the way past Salt Lake City. Things really started to change. The elevation rose. Things got a little bit crisper and cooler. been through Salt Lake City many times. It's always beautiful to see those mountains over to the side of the city. Yeah. But this, this time they the were... the first time that we had no need to stop at the Edge Power Sports <laughs> in yeah. Salt Lake City. It was very Thankfully. comforting passing them. I waved. <laughs> they didn't see me, but I didn't need a, 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 a horn fix. I didn't need... Right. Yeah, no, my... Knock on wood. Yeah. We definitely have been doing well with our new motorcycle. Yeah. We haven't had any major breakdowns so far. No. Our plan that day was to go just past Salt Lake City to one of our favorite towns in Utah called Logan. Logan is on the northern end of Utah, right where it butts up against Idaho. Yeah, there's a, a, a really good pizza joint there. Yes. And when we pulled into Logan, we were slightly disappointed because our little pizza joint had, was closed on Tuesdays now. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, there was thankfully a little sub shop right next door that we ate at that was very good. I had looked up 
some places to uh, disperse camp. And if you don't know disperse camping, it's just kind of like camp spots that are tucked into forests and natural areas. Just wild camping. So yeah, we found I found a little wild camp spot via iOverlander, awesome app. And so we pulled down this little dirt road. also a recreational area for bikers um like people on bicycles bicyclists mountain biking yeah and um people hiking and trekking with their dogs We found a little spot right next to the bike trail. It was really cool. Everyone was very friendly. We'd yeah. always wave to the bikers. So we got to this wonderful camp spot. And Logan, our favorite city in Utah. Yeah, in Logan, Utah. And I am really liking it. Um, you can hear the sound of birds. There's the occasional biker on the bike path behind us but um, that's fine, everyone's been really friendly. And they do all these jumps over the mounds. Some very charismatic <laughs> folk be like, there's a jump coming up, woo! Yeah. You know, and everybody be like, yeah, nailed it, awesome. If I lived in Utah and lived in Logan, you know, that would be a fun place to go ride bikes. You sadly could not partake. I, I cannot ride a bicycle, no, so especially no. I can't do those We'd jumps do or some anything. tandem jumps. <laughs> so, tandem, yeah. tandem, tandem mountain BMXing. biking. Yeah. <laughs> we'll be number one because we'll be the only ones. We'll, <laughs> we'll win in the X Games right up there with Sean White. <laughs> Oh my love You're such a fragile thing I know And with the winter comes the ice, the snow But I'm here at all And we were able to have a fire Oh my love Worry about the cold just yet. Perfect temperature, butterflies all around, clear skies. I'm looking forward to having a lovely, relaxing night. <laughs> but it was a good night's uh, sleep. You know, it was quiet and it was, it was. away from the road. Um, it was our first night of a bit of cold. Um, we've had a couple chilly nights before that oh. but as we head north i know that things are going to get colder and colder an asterisk when when it says the first night of we were cold that's that's her she's always <laughs> she's like 20 cold. degrees colder than me at all times so when she's cold i'm comfortable so but we have a good setup and we've prepared yeah, for it's the called cold. tim's body heat <laughs> yes i mean that's why we don't have separate sleeping bags yeah. because i cannot produce body heat i don't know why yeah. and tim is like a furnace i am her so life support we yeah we have a quilt that goes over us and it traps in both of our body heats which is just tim's yeah. so i stay warm as well good morning we just woke up and it was a really nice night um i was a little cold nope. for the first part of the night Tim creates his own body heat, which is nice and convenient, but I was a little cold, so I was wearing my hat. <laughs> I was 
and I still am in my down jacket. And then check this out. I had my uh, my super warm pants. Look at these socks. <laughs> they were super warm. So um, I warmed up and uh, it was a really nice night. And we woke up to these beautiful views. And I was able to stay warm that night. So um, I welcome. was a little, yeah, I was a little cold at first, but then I was like, all right, it's obviously a lot colder here than it has been down south. So, um, you know, we just came from like the Phoenix area yeah. and we've, we've been in a lot of hot places. So I think it was just a little bit of an adjustment for me. And I put on all my warm gear. And after that, I slept very warmly. We're in Logan, Utah. And today we're, we're gonna, gonna be going Yellowstone. to Yellowstone. Let me get coffee. Yes. So we woke up the next day to go through Logan Canyon. We are going to go on a road that we've been wanting to go on for a very long time again, and it is Logan Canyon. Yeah, and we might deke off of it on our way to Bear Lake to go on a little kind of off-road section, or at least not main road section. So we'll see what the day brings. up because it's a little bit chillier. It's 59 degrees. Yeah, yeah Logan Canyon and a little offshoot depending on yeah how we're feeling. It's a long day but we'll take a lot of breaks and we can't get anywhere in too quick of a time anyway so. perfectly paved and twisty and it's um, full of all of these campgrounds right next to the road. Yeah, which blew my mind. Half of me was like, oh, it would have been really cool to camp there. But the other half was like, well, that would have been right off of the highway and there's trucks, yeah. you know, all the time and we would have heard them and this wasn't as romantic but uh but it is nice to know that there's all those campgrounds there because they're right along the river the canyon is beautiful yeah. so you know they're also good options for sure and everything then, has its pluses and minuses less bikers yeah <laughs> so this is really cool we were just riding along Logan Canyon and Tim spotted two moose. You're not going to be able to see it in this camera because they're very far away, but hopefully we'll be able to get a picture of them. It's exciting. I lived in Maine for many years and I never saw a moose. So we haven't even gotten to Yellowstone yet and we're already seeing incredible wildlife. There was also a bunch of deer. Um, I'm just super, super thrilled. Our original plan had been to follow along Bear Lake, but then on Google Maps I had zoomed in and I saw this little white forest road fire road fr something 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 that kind of did a western uh little arc around you know the main highway and i said well let's take that road that should hopefully be cool it could be lame could be boring <laughs> it could be insanely difficult it or it could be whatever so this is the little 
off-road section that we've chosen to take opposed to the main highway. Looks like an RV can get back here, so there's nothing too uh, gnarly to you know brag about. But we did see some ATVs. Uh, all you know that looks like this is our little playground. So I don't want to be yeah. zipping to here all too quickly, but. Yeah. I actually dropped the bike like an idiot. I had yeah. another zero mile an hour drop. Yeah, we wanted to have a little picnic of our sandwiches that were left over from that sub place from the night before in Logan. Yeah. And as we were discussing where to have our picnic, we'd stopped and then tried to turn around no, all at once. <laughs> I stopped and we had a discussion. Then I started the bike and I tried to make a zero mile an hour turn. <laughs> And then we just immediately went over. <laughs> <I was> like, <laughs> Man. So we've decided to stop for a little lunch as yeah, a little zero mile an hour bike drop was pretty silly of me, but it happens. Here's some snow. Yeah. I've dropped the bike, I think, since I've owned it, this new bike, like four times. And two of them I've been going zero miles an hour. <laughs> and that's just embarrassing. And it sucks. But we got it back up and we got to our little picnic area. Yeah, and it was a nice that, lunch. Next to a little patch of snow. And it was real beautiful. Yeah. How was your lunch? Amazing. And uh, yeah, then we meandered back on down to see what we could see. beautiful because you could see these distant mountains covered in snow. This was the first time that we'd seen snow-capped mountains. The birch forest. Yeah. Yeah, look at this. This little snow caps, the everwhites mixed in with the evergreens. But then they had these birch trees yeah. with the white bark. At first we were so high up that the birch trees hadn't sprouted their leaves as of yet. And yeah. so it was like you know this white bark against these evergreens against the blue sky against mm. you know white snow peak mountains it was just really 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 cool yeah and very unexpected like we just picked a random road off yeah. of the main road just to kind of have some time that wasn't on pavement some time that wasn't on the main highway we'd been doing a lot of highway miles yeah and this turned out to be perfect it was Absolutely amazing. Another fabulous camping spot opportunity. Yeah. Look at that. It comes with free firewood all set up. You could spend your whole summer just camping at different places all along those roads. Some people, <laughs> you, you can see their RV and it was like wedged up on a rock and rock, you know. Yeah, some people like, do spend their so, whole summer. Like, okay, buddy, if you're here past your 14 day limit, but I'm not, I'm not gonna say nothing. 
one of my new favorite roads tacked on to one of my old favorite roads. By favorite, there's too many of them to actually designate anything into favorites, but my one of my favorite roads in Utah and Idaho. Yeah. There must have been a ridge of mountains. We got to the very top where there were no more leaves except for the evergreen trees. Yeah. And then came down into the valley. Yeah, and then once we came down, then we started to notice the little birch trees budding, yeah. you know, and popping. It was just a good ride. And I was just, you know, not disappointed, but I was sad when we had to turn back onto the main, mm. you know, asphalt. I mean, a lot of people in these videos, they see asphalt and they get off their bike and kiss it. You know, and I was, I got onto asphalt and I was like, oh, Aww. damn you asphalt. <laughs> But even that was a nice ride because it was going on the other side of the Grand Tetons. Yeah. You could see these super white capped mountains in the distance to the right. It was kind of like this nice introduction to the whole Yellowstone area. If someone, I'm going to make a second Bob Ross reference. <laughs> okay. So if Bob Ross had painted a beautiful mountainous landscape, it was so far in the distance. It was like this, you know, kind of still image way in the distance yeah. that we kept riding past for, you know, an hour and a half or something, you know. Yeah. And, you know, the thing, the scenery in front was like these old homesteads and barns. Right, and pasture land. It was almost still frame. The road would kind of curve and then you'd check back on your little friend, <laughs> you know. At this point in time, we still thought that we were on the correct schedule. We hadn't mm. realized that we'd messed up our schedule as sometimes vagabonds do. Uh, we got into cell phone range coverage after we, you know, came down from the little mountain and we were back on the, the main road. And I always have my Cardo's Bluetooth to my phone and I just heard a little bleep that I got a message and they all come at once and there's Facebook and Instagram and, you know, <laughs> arsenal of, you know, sounds of notifications. But uh, I saw Templomoto because they had asked me, when are you going to be there tomorrow? Long story short, I thought he was talking to me last night about th that day. We got it all messed we up. We got it all messed up. And then so I, I, re I replied to him when we were getting gas saying, yeah, we'll be there in like three hours. And then he shot me back, you know, like question mark. It's tomorrow. It's the ninth, <laughs> not the eighth. What are you doing? You know, and I was like, oh, numbers. So I felt like this was kind of my fault. Um, and I agreed. Because <laughs> I was the one She's making the, the schedule girl. in my head. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I messed things up. Um, I thought two nights instead of two days. So I was feeling really, really bummed. Oh, who cares? When I make a mistake like that, I take it out on myself and I was, I was feeling quite upset, but... But that's what we do every day is we, we travel and then we camp somewhere. If that's it's right. It's not like, necessarily on the day we assumed. Like I do want to make a little calendar reminder for my birthday for you. <laughs> but I'm so thankful that you kind of picked up the slack and we're like, no, you know, let's make the best of this. Like we're near Yellowstone. Like this can't be bad. It's yeah. good weather. Let's just find a campground. We and get we a, found who, this who place goes, five minutes away. Yeah. Oh no, we get an extra day in Yellowstone. Whoa, yeah. is me? <laughs> so we pulled in and we kind of rode around this little loop. It ends at a nice little raging river that we were able to fill up our filter. And, yeah. yeah. Here's our newest campsite right outside of Yellowstone and turned out to be pretty nice. It's really quiet here, um, a little bit chilly, but you know, we prepared for this. So I think we'll be warm in the night, but we'll see. cold water, but it's a proper beach. 
just glacial runoff. It's super cold, but perfect for washing our dishes. Tim's getting firewood. He's making a gorgeous fire setup. But we, we found our own little slice of a heaven. Our yeah. fire has has oh distinguished. <laughs> but we were able to have a fire last night. Now, when we got here, it was cold. And so I knew that the night was going to be quite cold. We even looked up the weather on our phone, and I think it dropped down to 35, oh. a little bit above freezing. Yeah. Um, so I did all the preparations to make sure that I was going to be warm last night. And, which involves making sure I was around. <laughs> and uh, I was pretty warm last night. Um, I had some strange dreams, and every once in a while I'd wake up and listen for bears, because this is definitely bear country. And we kept hearing strange sounds, and I was like, is it a bear grunting? Is it a moose kind of shaking out his fur? What is that? Um, and it could have been any of that. But I knew that we are just living amongst nature and that we yeah. have to share this space with all the wildlife. And we made sure that we put all of our uh, food and smelly things far away. Besides me. High up in a tree. <laughs> this smelly thing slept well. right in the tent. <laughs> But we learned our lesson from the raccoons over yeah. in California. Um, I mean, we know this from before, but... Yeah, that was a dumb it, thing. It, it beat it home for us. It got us right back on track of, you know. Exactly. So everything that had a smell to it that was not Tim, yeah. we put up high into the tree far away. Yeah. And uh, we had a very peaceful night. Yeah. I woke up, made some coffee, made another fire. Yeah. I think our time here is, is coming to an end because I want to go explore Yellowstone. Yes. So this video is coming to an end, but stay tuned for the next video where we finally get into Yellowstone. Yay. So I hope you liked this video. If you did, please give us a big thumbs up and hit the subscribe button below. Ding, ding. And we'll be seeing you next time. Stay safe, everybody. Bye. Peace. Peace.